Tim. Thanks for joining me. Hi, everyone. My name is Sarah Stoker. I'm the founder of the newsletter, If You Know, You Know. It is a newsletter for small business owners, anyone who's interested to learn about AI tools, AI happenings, and just generally become more creative. This morning, this afternoon, wherever you're tuning in from, I have the joy and honor of speaking with Tim. Tim, can you introduce yourself and tell us why we're talking this morning? Thank you, Sarah. Um, my name is Tim Shea. I am the uh, CEO of a company called Life's Work Insights here in Los Angeles. I've been an LA native for 25 years. Um, I've been raising two little girls out here who are 10 and six and are awesome. I grew up in Boston. I went to Tufts University. You have a lot of jumbos in your, in your, in your crew out there, uh, go jumbos. I studied a weird combination of sociology and philosophy and computer science. I think uh, I also really enjoyed partying, which maybe explains a little bit of the distracted nature of my studies. I did have the pleasure of studying under a gentleman named uh, Daniel Denning, um, invented this sort of field of cognitive science, the study of consciousness. Uh, the focus was on art artificial intelligence, consciousness, uh, conscious robots, about as sci-fi as you can get back in 1999. Um, I thought it was interesting that in in 99, there was no big AI field, right? It was just people working in robotics for the most part. And I think that a lot of the chatter was probably framed in that science fiction context. And the, the industry was focused on the sort of more humble moniker of machine learning, right? A little, a little more, more sedated ambitions. Um, so I moved to LA after I graduated. Um, I worked in tech, I spent 25 years in advertising. It's building software building teams and building companies. Uh, in 2018, I started Latticework Insights. We are a data agency. Uh, we are focused on integrating data from many different sources, so doing data storytelling based on lots of different types of data sources. Uh, and it's wild. In 25 years, I've seen lots of upheavals and changes in the industry. You know, the dot-com was where I came up. Uh, there was mobile, then there was social. It was big data. It was like the hottest thing under the sun for a long time. The modern data stack uh, was another kind of upheaval or trend for a bit. And it feels like 2024, there's just been this hard fork. It's like all the chatter, all previous movements have pivoted hard into AI. So we're, just, we're back into this realm where AI all of a sudden is real and uh, it, it, it's here for us. So that was, I think it was probably our first conversation was talking about that subject. And um, we are really excited to dig in more. Yeah. Oh, thank you for sharing a little background. I appreciate it. Tim and I met a couple weeks ago at the Venice CPG meetup hosted by Cole and Mike. So thanks so much and shout out to them. I would love to know what was the catalyst moment in 2018 when you started Lattice? What was that? What did that look like? What was that origin story there? Yeah, I, so I was, I had moved over to sales. I was in pre-sales for a couple of years. I moved over to traditional sales. I was selling data products into ad agency holding companies and um in 2017 it was a miserable time to be selling data products into agencies and the reason why i got told this all the time was people would say tim we love your data product but we've already bought 20 other data products that do slightly different versions of what you're discussing and I think that was my first light bulb moment where these folks were saying, we don't even have time to log into all these data products. Someone will come in to us with a brief around consumer behavior, audience insight, or media plan. We have maybe time to log into three of them, but no one's got the time or the skill to weave together a story from 20 different places. Oh, strategy. That, how do you weave together a strategy when 20 different platforms are telling you slightly different things? And this is a real uh, sort of uniform skill set. And you know, we don't have time for that. And that was my big light bulb moment was that, you know, the average company has their data stuck in 10, 20, 30, if you're a big company, 100 different platforms. And there's a need for not just the technical know how, but this sort of finesse for people that can, are left brain, right brain, uniform journalists that can do data storytelling and write code and show up for the meeting and deliver a sweeping presentation. And I was like, this is the thing. So I'm starting with Insights. We're focused on building Lattice Works and um, 
and getting the insight. Yeah. And so that's you. You're the one who's presenting and knowing the stories and you are a great storyteller. I will. Here I am. Thank you so much. We're talking about uh, your daughter's gymnastics tournaments this weekend. And I already learned so much. <laughs> so I really appreciate that. But what do you think is the biggest, this is a can of words question. So answer how you will. What do you think has been the biggest change in data, whether that's machine learning, AI, answer how you will, between 2018 when you started to now or 2018 to when you started studying in 1999, the matrix era, if you will. The matrix era. The, you know, it's funny, you know, when I, so 1989 was the era of like MySQL, these little baby databases that were just firing websites. It was uh, very few websites you would go to would actually be collecting data. You just go read a bunch of stuff or see a bunch of content. Um, slowly the databases got bigger. Slowly, the moniker of big data became like the thing. Everyone thought this is going to change the industry. If we just had enough data about every person and thing and device on the planet, we could make great decisions. And there was this explosion of brand new database technologies. This is the era of like Hadoop. And so I think there was like this rush to move away from SQL databases uh, and to play with these more esoteric, uh, sexy, you know, hard to hard to use um, data stores. And it was interesting to watch that trend completely 360 and come back to SQL. So when I started Latticework in 2018, um, the hot database was Snowflake. So Snowflake, BigQuery, and Redshift were traditional SQL databases that could scale infinitely. And Can you could you tell write us just... SQL databases really quick? Say again? Can you tell us what a SQL database is really quick? I'd love to. Um, so imagine a spreadsheet, you got rows and columns, uh, and then imagine uh, every sheet that you have tells a little something a little bit different. You got one tab for products, one for users, one for orders, one for transactions and returns. And you could imagine how that proliferates. And so instead of managing data in spreadsheets, which are free form and you know, a lot of bad things could happen in a spreadsheet, um, a SQL database is an application that runs in the cloud and it stores all of your stuff. And SQL is a language for you to literally ask it questions, get mm -hmm. me all the orders from last month that for this product and, and, and so on and so forth. Um, so it's a cool- Go right there. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. And, and again, in many ways, SQL is a, um, is a language for doing storytelling, it's for querying uh, the database. Now, what's wild is most programming languages are not written in English, they're written in a very kind of, you know, esoteric uh, language. Nowadays, the hottest programming language is English because you can just ask the machines for what you want and the machines know how to go get it. And so you can ask it questions about things on the internet. You can ask it questions about all of human knowledge, all of di any, any digitized human knowledge is readily available to you in chat GPT. You just have to ask the question in English. And the wildest thing to see now is it writes code. So mm. you can say, you know what? I need some code that does this and it will just give you the code. And it is mind blowing as someone I've been writing code for 30 years, let's say. Mm -hmm. um, I've had a lot of uh, junior programmers on my team and um, the programmers write very buggy code. And so does ChatGPT, but it pretty much performs at the level of a decent 22 year old programmer and it's just absolutely wow wow no it's insane and i'm loving the stories like this that i hear of just how artificial intelligence has changed your day to day i would love to know a quickie of what does lattice works do sure absolutely so so uh true story in uh let's call 20 as recently as 2023 the average company has their data stuck in between 20, 30, 40, 50 different databases. If you and I would start a company tomorrow, what would we do? We'd have data in Facebook ads, Google ads, TikTok ads, we'd be selling products on Shopify. We would have HubSpot or Salesforce. We'd have data in Quicken. We'd have a supply chain. Um, all of a sudden, really basic questions about our company require us to go to 10 different places and download spreadsheets and glue them together and build a presentation and say, here's the answer to that question that you asked. And the problem with that setup is that you have to do that every Monday morning. 
Every time someone asks a follow-up question, every time your investors call and say, we'd love to give you a check, but we'd love to know what your current LTV CAC ratio is. And an LTV CAC ratio is a, you know, um, is a multi data source question. What does the lifetime of a user in your company look like? How much revenue are they generate? How much are you spending to maintain them? It just becomes unsustainable. So what we do is we build data pipelines to automate the download of that data. We build a warehouse, we build all the custom models. What's your total revenue? What's your lifetime value of a customer? On and on and on, we build dashboards and more and more. We also help folks build out what we call a data culture. So you can't just build technology because a lot of times brands say, we built this spaceship template, like, what do we do with it now? Who's going to, who's going to operate this thing? And so we go in and really teach people that like muscle memory, like teach them how to fish, teach them how to do analytics, teach them how to do multi data source data storytelling, um, and run their company, keep things really healthy. Mm. And so, yeah, so we focus on retail and DSC. High early stage, high growth retail D to C companies. If I were to meet a COO, CFO, growth minded person mm -hmm. from a post Series A D to C company, I I have my sales hat in my my backpack. I put it on and I'm ready to go ready to close the deal. <laughs> so now you're ideal consumer. So that's right. That was my second question, but you got it. So never I mind. Love it. I'm on it. One step ahead. Um, as we are looking at this space and you've told me a little bit about your college history. I'd love to go back as well. Who is Tim like at eight years old in fourth grade? What were some of the things that he, you were doing then that you're seeing correlated into your career or not now? You know, you, uh, the, the question of eight is funny just because I have girls in that range. A big conversation we have is around screens. A big conversation we have is around specifically video games. And so, yeah, that question, uh, it, it, it sparked a very vivid memory of getting uh, my first Nintendo, the Nintendo One. I don't know if they were numbering the game systems back then. I got the Nintendo One and I got Super Mario Brothers and I got Duck Hunt and I got The Legend of Zelda. And me and my friend, my next door neighbor, played video games for like 48 straight hours. Like, wow. and I mean like attic level eight years old in the matrix um and my parents were just like beside themselves like what has happened to our child and i remember this one moment we we finished legend of zelda we got to the end we rescued the princess we rescued the princess and my friend i'll never forget goes dude this is so awesome now we can go back to riding bikes and playing cops and robbers and being outside and doing our thing and i remember with controller in hand being like, yeah, that sounds great. That sounds great. But Michael, uh, something's weird. The next level of it, Legend of Zelda is slightly different. There's a new level. Everything's changed. We got to check out this new level. Mm -hmm. And maybe that was the last day I ever saw Michael. Like, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll lost to the house of history. Um, but yeah, I just was a video game. Mm -hmm. It's a video game. Mm -hmm. So uh, nowadays I am cold turkey. Do not play any video games, but I was I had that thing where I was just like, oh, screens, and uh, I got a complex problem, and I'm gonna solve this thing. Yeah. So I guess your net net of that story is you're not gonna give any screen time restrictions to your girls so they can become as successful as you, right? There's there's some nuance to that. That's a joke. You're you're <laughs> in the right universe. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. No, I love it. And then wrapping up here. Where do you think Lattice Works is going to be next year, five years? What does growth look like to you right now for your company? It's, it's so funny. Like, everything's changed. Yeah. Everything's changed. I mean, th this is a uh, year number seven. And then all of a sudden, in the last six months, everything's changed. Uh, there is plenty of uh, modern data stack work out there where we're mixing and we're building data warehouses and doing modeling. But so much of how that gets done has changed. Artificial intelligence has changed everything. The skill set has changed. The tool set has changed. The design patterns have changed. And so um, every conversation we have with folks is just like, on one hand, they are uh, either frozen in fear or mm -hmm. overflowing with optimism about artificial intelligence. But there's this really strange feeling of like, well, how? Like, what if, how do we apply this? to our my company i've got a 
hundred employees. Do I, do I not have employees anymore? Do I 10 X all my employees? Do we use, do we get rid of all of our SaaS platforms? Just use AI platforms. There's like a massive sea change in the way work gets done. And, um, I think it's going to be, I think it's, it's the only thing anyone's talking about, uh, this year. Yeah. And then last question. As many of the folks that are listening here, entrepreneurs are picking themselves by the bootstraps on Monday morning to attack another incredible and grateful week of work. What's something that you think about a quote, a saying, a mantra, um, when those days get tough or when things get, don't go according to plan. What is Ooh. one of your favorite quotes that you go to often for hope and inspiration? I mean, the, that's, it's a tough question. Uh, that's a curveball for nine thirty on, on Monday morning. The look, one, honestly, one of the best ones is like the, uh, I'm probably butcher it. The only way out is through when you're going through the only way is through nothing you can do about it. You just got to keep going. Can't sit still. I think another one that brings uh, me a lot of comfort too is um, you know, demand expertise is the new oil. Right. So like in, in all of this upheaval that's happening, people that really understand how the world works, people that understand how businesses work and just how humans behave. Uh, domain expertise is really like the most valuable thing. So you think, oh my God, I have this huge skill set. I got to kind of like throw a lot of it in the, in the wastebasket. Um, your domain expertise is like even more valuable than it was last year. Mm. And um, so, yeah, those are, those are two goodies. Mm. Thank you so much for spending time. I really appreciate your energy in this space. I can't wait to keep watching Latticeworks grow. And I hopefully will see you in Venice here in a couple of days, weeks at the next CPG meetup. That's right. That's right. Looking forward to it. Sarah, <laughs> thanks so much for having me on. Thank you so much, Jim. Have a good one. Take care.